settlement is an undesirable but common and easily recognisable feature of many utility reinstatements and is usually a sign of poor workmanship. Settlement is hazardous to pedestrians and road users and has caused much public concern in recent years. General public demand has brought about legislative changes in reinstatement practices throughout the UK for all utility operations. The new Roads and Street Works Act 1991 requires substantially higher standards of service and performance for all utility reinstatements in the public highway. Failure to achieve these standards necessitates remedial work, which is expensive to carry out and in some cases could even mean public prosecution. British Gas is committed to improving the standards of reinstatement work through well-trained, capable and properly equipped personnel. Any reinstatement must be able to match the performance of the surrounding highway structure as closely as is reasonably practicable. And this means that it should be able to withstand the stresses generated by the prevailing traffic to the same degree as the undisturbed structure. As long as the correct materials are used and are in good condition, the quality of the reinstatement depends upon the compacted stiffness and density that has been achieved. This video will show you how to assess the quality of reinstatement by measuring compaction of the road layers using the Clegg tester. Before Clegg readings can be interpreted properly, it is essential that the operator has a basic understanding of the structure of the highway. All roads are made up of a number of layers constructed from different materials. The flexible road is the type you're most likely to come across. In its undisturbed state, the flexible road consists of four layers. The wearing course is the top layer, which stands up to the wear and tear, both from traffic and weather. The wearing course also provides an even skid-resistant surface above the base course. The base course provides an even surface for the wearing course and spreads the traffic load over the road base. Both the wearing course and base course form the surfacing layers, and beneath them are two more layers, the road base and sub base. The road base provides the main structural strength of the highway so that the traffic load is spread over the lower layer. The sub base provides a working platform on which to construct the other layers and spreads the load over the existing ground or subgrade material. The reinstatement differs from the undisturbed structure and consists of two additional layers, fine fill and backfill which lie between the sub-base and sub-grade material. The fine fill layer lies at the bottom, above the sub-grade material. The fine fill layer is the layer of protective material which surrounds and protects the utility apparatus. The fine fill also forms the foundation on which to build the rest of the reinstatement. The backfill layer lies immediately above the fine fill layer. Backfill thickness varies to make up the difference between the depth of the reinstatement and the thickness of the road structure. In the construction of all of these layers, acceptable standards can only be achieved by using well-graded materials in good condition. These materials must be compacted to the correct layer thicknesses using approved compaction equipment with the specified number of compaction passes. A quick inspection of the materials and weather conditions are a guide to establishing the likely quality of the reinstatement and provides a good basis on which to interpret subsequent plague readings. The quality and condition of unbound reinstatement materials can be checked by removing the top six inches from any stockpile on the site and examining the particles exposed. Firstly, all the particles should be well graded so that they contain a good proportion of particles of all sizes, from fine to coarse. This is true for all unbound layers. When compacted, the larger particles lock together and the smaller particles fill the gaps to give a dense, strong and stable layer. Compare this to a uniform grading where particles are about the same size or gap grading where there is a gap in the particle size range. Neither of these grading types provides the required strength or stability. Too many or too few fine or coarse particles or a contamination of granular materials are also examples of poor or unacceptable grading. Secondly,
The moisture content of the material at the time of compaction is very important. It should be neither too wet nor too dry, just moist. If reinstated materials have been placed and compacted some time prior to clag testing, it is possible that the stockpile and even the compacted material itself may have become drier or wetter depending on the weather. As a guide at the time of compaction, clay materials should be able to be rolled out into a cigar shape about the size of a pencil before breaking up. Too dry and it breaks. Too wet or too plastic and it rolls too thinly. Fine fill should be able to be squeezed into a ball and more or less hold together. Too dry and it collapses. Too wet and it may hold but moisture will ooze out. Granular materials should show a moist sheen on the larger particles with fine particles adhering. Too wet and there is visible water and no adhering fine particles. Too dry and there is no sheen and only a few adhering particles. The same principles apply for the grading and moisture content of all unbound layers of the reinstatement, whether the materials are to be used as fine fill, backfill, sub-base or road base. Establishing the quality and condition of materials used by inspecting the site is helpful to accurately interpret the readings obtained from the clay tester. Although the clay tester is not infallible, it's a very useful instrument for measuring the likely quality of the reinstatement, provided, of course, that it is used by a competent operator. And it is to this that we now turn our attention. Clegg readings measure the strength and stiffness of the ground. The unit of measurement of the clegg is called impact value, or IV. The clegg tester, or clegg hammer, consists of three major components. A plastic guide tube with integral base plate and carrying handle. A steel drop hammer with internal impact sensor called an accelerometer. An electronic control box with integral microprocessor, batteries and digital readout. The guide tube ensures a vertical drop and the hammer, which is a standard weight and diameter, should always be released from the same position. The accelerometer senses the impact and registers the peak deceleration of the hammer as an impact value on the digital display. The digits on the left-hand side, registered here as 027, give the meter reading. The higher the compacted strength and stiffness of the material tested, the higher the impact value. The rightmost digit, registered here as 4, is the number of hammer drops. The tester is battery powered and is very simple to use. There is no initial setting up, just a button to press and a hammer to lift and drop. The Clegg testing procedure is the same no matter what material is being tested. First, choose a test position where the guide tube can stand upright without assistance. Remove any loose surface material and ensure that the tube is not standing over a stone larger than those in the surrounding surface. Second, ensure that the guide tube is reasonably vertical. The operator should stand with either both feet on the base flange or one foot on the flange whilst steadying the tube with the side of the leg. Remove the screwdriver locking pin that retains the hammer in the tube and unclip the meter display unit. Press the button on the display and check the readout shows zero IV and zero drop count. If necessary, release and depress the button until zero readings are obtained and then keep the button depressed for the remaining readings. Next, raise the hammer with one hand until the white indicator ring is level with the top of the guide tube. Make sure that the cable is free and drop the hammer. Note the meter reading before you continue. Without moving the guide tube or releasing the meter button, this process should be repeated four more times to give a total of five meter readings. Now it's time to assess the meter readings. Usually, the first two or three drops take up the surface irregularities immediately beneath the hammer. The remaining readings should then level out. The fourth reading is the critical one and represents the degree of compaction. If any readings are more than 2 IV less than the previous reading, or if the fifth reading is more than the fourth by more than 2 IV, the results are generally not reliable and the test should be abandoned. 
provided the other readings are satisfactory, the fourth one can be accepted as valid. If the fourth drop is suspect, then the test should be repeated. If this does happen, a repeat test should be carried out at least 300 millimeters away from the original test position. The strength of the reinstatement will vary in different places and it is important to take a sufficient number of readings to determine average strength as well as locating soft spots. In a typical one meter square patch, a minimum of three readings are required, one in the center and two in the corners. If good agreement is not reached, then check the remaining two corners. In short trenches, a reading should be taken at one meter intervals, with intermediate readings taken when results are not consistent. In longer trenches, readings should be taken at longer intervals, up to about five meters, depending on overall length. The longer the trench, the greater the number of readings that will be needed to achieve a representative average. Inconsistent readings generally indicate some problem which will require further investigation. Target values are identified for each layer of the road and these should also be borne in mind when assessing results. Road base, target IV 30. Sub base, target IV 22. Backfill, target IV 18. Fine fill, target IV 10. These values represent a balance between compacted density and stiffness and are the lowest values which can be accepted under average conditions from a test of any given layer, compacted using conventional compaction equipment. Under average conditions, the target values will normally be exceeded by a few units. Under ideal conditions, significantly higher values can be achieved. Consistent failure to achieve the minimum values will usually indicate poor material quality, inadequate compaction or excessive layer thickness. Where materials are compacted near the maximum acceptable moisture content, it is likely that a slightly higher compacted density will be achieved along with a small reduction in material stiffness. This will often be reflected by a Clegg reading up to 2 IV less than target value for the fine fill layer and up to 3 IV at backfill, sub base and road base. These lower Clegg values are acceptable only under these circumstances as long as the operator is satisfied that all the Clegg readings are consistent and compare well with what has been observed on site. Materials compacted near the minimum acceptable moisture content must however achieve the target values. Compaction should always be carried out according to the reinstatement specification. If target values are not achieved, then further compaction of layers can improve target values, but often it will be necessary to re-excavate down to the last layer where acceptable values were observed. If target values are achieved before the required number of passes have been applied, it is still necessary to apply the remainder of compaction passes. An inherent limitation in most methods of compaction assessment is that the measurement relates mainly to materials within 200 to 250 millimeters of the surface that is being tested. It is therefore not possible to monitor the state of compaction of the lower layers of the completed reinstatement directly from the road base. Also, layer thickness can disguise poor compaction at depth and therefore periodic checking on top of each layer or at appropriate increments of up to 200 millimeters, whichever is the smaller, is recommended during the reinstatement operation. Clegg readings may also be influenced by pipe resonance when testing within 300 millimeters of a large diameter PE pipe. However, this effect is minimized at road base level due to total material thickness. Acceptable values recorded at road base level are usually indicative of adequate compaction, but there are other clues. The tone of the impact noise can be indicative of stiffness and strength achieved. This is particularly true in extreme situations, where, for example, there are fine materials or dry, coarse materials. Another clue to this is the depth of the indentation left by the hammer the stronger the material, the shallower the indentation. Typical indentations on good material which is properly compacted will range from 20 millimeters on fine fill at 10 IV to 2 millimeters on road base with an impact value of more than 30 IV. Indentations outside this range generally indicate a problem. As a guide, 
with fine fill materials, an indentation depth of 25 millimeters would not be acceptable, irrespective of the Clegg reading. With dry or coarse granular materials, a barely visible indentation of around one millimeter or less would indicate that the grading or condition of material was unacceptable, despite falsely high Clegg readings. If this is found to be the case, then reference to the site observations is necessary. On wet or soft material at any level within the reinstatement, the base plate itself will also leave an obvious impression. There may be some circumstances in which there are adverse conditions which prevent minimum target values being reached. For example, if there is a very high water table, or a naturally unstable trench bed, and or sidewalls, or where there is a soft clay bed, and or sidewalls. In such cases, the requirements for material grading and moisture content would still apply, though it may be necessary to reduce the amount of compaction of the lower layers if there is evidence of pumping, that is, water in the surrounding ground rising to the surface of the layers. In most cases of this nature, the upper layer should still achieve up to 3 IV less than the target value. These adverse conditions are rare, and local knowledge will generally help in the overall assessment of the situation. Whatever readings are taken with the Clegg tester, it is important that the instrument itself is working properly. The Clegg tester should be checked on a monthly basis. The functional check is carried out like the standard test procedure, except that the rubber test ring supplied with the instrument is placed on a solid, smooth, flat surface. For example, a concrete floor or curbstone, but not on the running surface of the road or footway. The guide tube is placed centrally over the test ring and the hammer is dropped 20 times, with each meter reading being recorded. Ignore the highest and lowest readings. All remaining readings should fall within plus or minus three of the value marked on the circumference of the test ring. The scatter of remaining test values should be evenly spread around the ring value. The Clegg tester functional check must be carried out on a hard, solid surface. Apart from the functional check with the test ring, the Clegg tester must never be dropped on any hard surface as this will permanently damage the accelerometer. Failure to meet the functional check test ring value means that the instrument must be returned to the manufacturer for calibration or repair. During the course of normal operations, the Clegg tester may indicate a malfunction by displaying one of two signals. Bat fail means that the batteries need replacing. This should be done immediately as further readings will be inaccurate. The locking pin screwdriver should be used to remove the back cover and the two 9 volt batteries replaced. Once the cover is put back, the functional check should be repeated. Stop now will be displayed when the test material is too hard. Normally this will only occur if the clegg is dropped on paved surfaces, but can occur if it's used directly on top of a large stone or on dry coarse aggregate. If this signal is displayed, then the test should be carried out again on a nearby surface. If the signal persists, then stop immediately and then check on some softer material and, if necessary, carry out the functional check. Although the Clegg tester is quite robust, it does require a certain amount of care. It should be transported in a protective box and placed on firm, level ground away from mobile plant. The cable and connector should be checked periodically for wear and tear, especially if inconsistent readings occur. Although readings may be taken in wet conditions, the control box is not fully waterproof and should be kept as dry as possible. If moisture does get into the box, the clegg can malfunction. The back cover should be removed in a dry area and the electronics allowed to dry out. It's also important to look after the base of the hammer and keep it free of material buildup. If material does stick to the hammer, it could leave an uneven indentation and give a false reading. Material buildup can sometimes be detected by a change in impact sound. If this does happen, check the base before taking the next reading. Impact sound is also a useful way of making sure that the hammer has dropped properly on the surface. If it's rubbed against the side of the tube on the way down, a low reading may be displayed. The Clegg tester has already proved a valuable instrument. Recognizable improvements have been observed in the standards of reinstatement whenever it's been used.
Now that substantially higher standards of reinstatement are a legislative requirement, the Clegg tester should be used regularly to monitor the reinstatement process to establish the quality of work at each stage. The Clegg is not a foolproof instrument. Readings must be taken by a competent operator and interpreted along with other evidence on site. Make sure you know how to use it properly.